This video is sponsored by Grammarly. So, you watch many educational videos, but when you try implementing any of the study tips, none of them seem to work for you. Do you guys even implement the study tips that I mentioned, or do you just watch all these videos to feel productive? Do I even want to know the answer? <laughs> Hey besties, in this video, I'll be discussing the three main types of learners, help you identify which one you are, and explain specific study tips that work for each of them. The last type of learner that I'll be explaining is very rare and not many students know that they're part of this group, which is sad because they typically struggle with their academics and don't know that there are so many study tips that can help them. So be sure to watch till the end of the video to know what that is. Get a pen and paper ready because there are lots of unique study tips in this video that will really help you. Let's start. Do you like doodling in your notebook? If you can't understand something in class, do you say, Teacher, can you write it down on the board? When you try to remember something, do you imagine how the pages look like instead of the words themselves? If you said yes to more than one of these questions, then you're probably a visual learner, like myself. I read somewhere that visual learners have nice handwriting and I don't know how true that is because look at my handwriting. Can you even read that? If you're a visual learner, here are three study tips that will help you. First, do the box method during classes or lectures. I absolutely hate one thing about in-person classes. It's the fact that the lecturer spits out information like a machine gun. I literally don't understand anything after coming out of the class. If that's you, then you need to do the box method. First, you write down the topic or name of your lecturer on top of the page. Then, write down the subtopics and jot down points as you go along. Lastly, box each subtopic or concept. This method is great for classes or lectures because you can very quickly and messily scribble down everything that the lecturer is saying while maintaining some form of organization and flow. Remember, as visual learners, lengthy text is not our friend. The box method is also great when you need to show relationships between different things or if information needs to be remembered in specific steps. So, a bonus tip. For mathematics, write out the steps needed to answer a particular question in boxes. When you're doing practice questions, refer to your series of boxes and you'll find that questions are a hundred times easier to answer. Next, flowcharts, flowcharts, flowcharts. For subjects like biology, history and English literature, we visual learners sometimes struggle because information is presented to us in lengthy sequences or sentences. I could stare at this for hours and literally not process anything. So what you want to do is break up all that information into flowcharts. Try to only write the keywords and the important facts. But if everything is important, just break up the paragraph into short sentences. I went from being overwhelmed by all the words to being able to remember basically the entire textbook. So next time you do notes, Draw flowcharts for everything. I actually explain more note-taking tips in these videos, so be sure to check them out here. Also, use symbols. Exclamation points for important information, question marks for information that's confusing or that you need to study further, stars for information you want to revise more on, then draw or print out pictures for complex concepts or processes. You can really see how my biology textbook is made for visual learners. I know it's exam season for a lot of you right now, so you're either cramming for your exams or you're struggling to finish all your assignments. So you guys need all the help that you can get and one of the best free tools that I've been using since secondary school that I highly recommend for any student is Grammarly. Basically, Grammarly is a digital writing assistant that improves your writing, helps you be more productive, and saves you time. It's super easy to set up. Just download Grammarly into your desktop and you can use it anywhere, such as Google Docs. If you struggle with writing, Grammarly's setting goal feature will really help you as it makes sure that whatever you're writing has the right tone and formality. 
The overall score feature also analyzes your writing and makes sure that you meet your assignment or presentation requirements. When I was writing my 1,500 word essay for economics, I used Grammarly's word count feature and Grammarly's synonym feature to make sure that my essay stood out. So if you have exams, assignments, or homework piling up right now, make sure that you're prepared to tackle everything by going to grammarly.com slash faefilms to sign up for a free account. And if you want extra features, upgrade to Grammarly Premium for 20% off using the link in my description box. Let's go to the next type of learner. Are you able to listen to a song and remember all the lyrics? If you don't understand something in class, do you say, Teacher, can you say that again? Do you learn more by listening to your teacher in class rather than reading your textbook alone? If you answered yes to more than one of these, then you're probably an auditory learner. The first study tip, record it. For auditory learners, you should record yourself explaining topics to understand it. So you write down the topic and subtopics on a piece of paper. Put that paper in front of you and start recording yourself blurting out everything you remember about each subtopic. Then play that recording and listen to it. This will really help you a lot for two reasons. First, you are hearing yourself saying what you know and enforcing what you remember. And the second reason, when you listen to the recording again, you can identify what you don't know. I did this method of recording and listening to myself when I wanted to practice for presentations or public speaking competitions. It might be a little bit cringy at first to listen to your own voice, but you'll get over it. Next study tip, convert illustrations or diagrams into verbal descriptions. If you just can't process complicated diagrams or graphs well, try to write out a description of that image at the bottom of it. When you're revising, read that description out loud. Remember, if you're an auditory learner, you need to keep hearing things in order to understand and remember it. Sometimes I read out the scripts for my videos to Miki and she tries her best to understand. Next, read any new material you're trying to learn out loud. If you find that too tiring, just read the important parts out loud. So for subjects like biology and physics, read the important terms out loud. For English, read the important parts of the plot out loud. Very important to note, it's much easier for auditory learners to get distracted by noise. So make sure that your study area is very quiet and avoid listening to music with lyrics. Now let's move on to the rarest type of learner. An advertisement might play in the next few seconds, so if you want to support this channel, please do not skip the ads. Thank you! Do you fidget a lot in class and can't sit still? Are you bored all the time unless you're exercising? Do you do better in classes with more practical work than written work? If you said yes to more than one of these, then you're probably a kinesthetic learner. Only 5% of students are kinesthetic learners, so you guys are unique. This means that you're typically high energy and you perform better doing physical activities than sitting down and studying. Don't worry, here are some specific study tips for you. First, try working standing up. If you're a kinesthetic learner, the most important thing to keep in mind is that you need to keep moving. Standing up allows you to flex and stretch your muscles, which will help your body internalize information. If you're a kinesthetic learner, standing up or pacing while studying can help you have better focus and retention. Investing in a book stand or standing desk may help you concentrate for longer periods of time and help you remember more of what you read. Next, keep something moving. Bounce on an exercise ball, play with a rubber band, or spin your pen. Doing something small like this can provide enough of a distraction to keep you alert and enable your brain to retain information and focus better. I actually have an exercise ball that I use specifically to study when I'm tired. Next, exercise during your study breaks. You typically get bored easily, so break up your study sessions and take many small breaks. Exercising between tasks can also help you stay focused and engaged with what you're learning. 
and it also keeps you fit, so win-win situation. Try doing different exercises for different subjects. That way, you can associate a particular exercise to a particular subject and you can remember more things. Next, if you're in class and you really can't move, try tension and relaxation. I actually do this a lot because I get restless really easily. For 5 to 10 seconds, tighten a particular muscle. I usually tighten my leg muscles or lack of. Relax when the seconds have passed and repeat. This technique helps relieve tension, which is something that we all, especially kinesthetic learners, experience during idle times. If you have made it this far, comment down below what type of learner do you think you are. I'll be sure to reply you. Like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell and set it to all so that you do not miss out on any future uploads. Thank you all for 273,000 subscribers and I see you all in my next video. Bye bye!